One of the newest art forms, video games, emerged 50 years ago in the 1970s, and by the next decade had wholly taken over the world. They've evolved so much since then, appearing on computers, home consoles, and mobile phones. But where might we see this unique medium go in the near future? This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, what will video games in 2050 look like? Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one, and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. Prior to the 1970s, video games existed on the computers of academics and scientists, as they were the only people who had the equipment to play them. But that all changed in 1972 with the release of the Magnavox Odyssey, the world's first home games console. Hot on its heels was the first true successful video game arcade cabinet, Atari's Pong, which was so similar to one of Odyssey's titles that it led to a lawsuit that nearly put Atari out of business. In the years since, the industry has been dominated by several companies. Atari stayed in the console game until the 1990s. Sega left in the 2000s when the Dreamcast couldn't hold its own against the PlayStation 1. And since the launch of the first Xbox, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo have been the major hardware manufacturers. We went from Pong through numerous classic arcade games, many of which are still played today, into the 3D era of the PS1 and N64. And now, we're in a world of photorealistic graphics that always seem to be on the cusp of tumbling into total VR. Indeed, for years, virtual reality has been seen as the ultimate future of video games, the thing games as a medium are always striving towards, total immersion in a digital world mind and body. But VR is not new, and its early iterations were significantly less successful than early consoles and home computer systems. One of the most infamous forays into VR for the general consumer was the Power Glove, a worn controller released for the NES in 1989 that had almost no flagship titles making use of it. It was expensive at the time and barely functional. In the mid-90s, Nintendo made another disastrous move towards VR with the Virtual Boy, a large headset with a few issues. There were again minimal titles for it, a trend with VR that continues to this day, and it could only display games in black and red. Due to fears of motion sickness, a problem that remains in modern VR, Nintendo eliminated head tracking functionality, reducing immersion. Nintendo did eventually release the wildly successful Wii, a potential step towards total VR, but it's not really the direction the company is going in today. The Wii did inspire some other technology, however, in its competitors, the Microsoft Kinect, which was almost a complete flop, and the PlayStation Move. The controllers of the PS Move were then repurposed for use with the PlayStation VR, Sony's flagship virtual reality system introduced in 2016, 10 years after the Wii and over 20 years after the Virtual Boy. The PS VR is the most affordable VR device on the market, although it still cost a hefty $400 at launch and of course requires a PlayStation console. At the higher end of the spectrum, you have the Oculus headsets acquired by Facebook in 2014 and Valve's proprietary HTC Vive. With the Oculus Quest 2, a standalone headset, the prices come down considerably. However, some of the best games only work in conjunction with a powerful PC. In 2021, Mark Zuckerberg announced that the parent company of the social media site Facebook, which was also called Facebook until then, would be rebranding itself as Meta, as he pushed his Metaverse concept, fueled by the VR technology of the Oculus system. This is Zuckerberg's vision for the future, a completely virtual world where people can live their entire lives, have meetings, and even buy real estate without leaving the comfort of their own homes. It's likely inspired by Neil Stevenson's 1992 novel, Snow Crash, credited by many as popularizing the term metaverse, though Snow Crash is a seminal cyberpunk dystopia rather than an aspirational goal. It's also, of course, the premise of The Matrix, another dystopia the Wachowskis certainly didn't want anybody to replicate. So, just how close to reality is the metaverse? Well, there are many obstacles we have to surmount first to get widespread adoption of VR. First is the price. 
headsets aren't cheap, and they require a decent PC or games console at least to unlock their full potential. This makes VR prohibitively expensive for anyone who isn't already an adherent. VR headsets also just aren't that comfortable, despite the progress in this area with each successive generation, at least not compared to, say, a pair of glasses. They need to be strapped on snugly or the focus begins to blur and they can get hot and sweaty underneath. Finally, the biggest problems, headaches, nausea, and motion sickness. Motion sickness is already an issue in regular video games, as the brain is seeing motion that the body doesn't experience, and it's a big problem that VR manufacturers need to overcome to sell more units. But even if that's solved, it can still be difficult for people with visual impairments and poor eyesight to use a headset. Only time will tell if VR does become widely adopted. But it's been around since at least the 90s in the consumer space. Other invaluable technologies like smartphones have had much less time and taken off far more significantly for their convenience. VR is an experience, but unless it becomes more convenient to have it than not, it's probably not going to extend beyond the gaming world. And even then, there will always be people who simply like playing games with controllers, just like we were doing 50 years ago. But there's another technology developing in the gaming world, one more recent that almost certainly will become the future, if it hasn't already, video game streaming. In the 21st century, streaming movies, music, and TV has widely become the norm, with many major blockbusters seeing simultaneous releases in theaters and home streaming. Video games are on the same trajectory, with many major companies already running game streaming services. The most infamous cloud gaming service is undoubtedly Google Stadia, thanks to its lofty promises and strange financing. But Stadia's service has improved a lot since its 2019 launch. Xbox has Project X Cloud, Sony has PS Now, and Nvidia has GeForce Now. The current problem with game streaming is that the infrastructure in most of the world isn't advanced enough to support it, but by 2050, that surely won't be a problem anymore. After all, at the beginning of the 1990s, it still wasn't necessary for homes to have an internet connection. One lesser known piece of game streaming history is the Satellaview where some Satellaview exclusive Legend of Zelda games were broadcast via satellite in the form of episodes to NES systems with an add-on. Many of these games have been lost because they were broadcast by a satellite, but this was an early form of game streaming pioneered by Nintendo in the late 1990s. Like today, you needed additional equipment, a NES add-on or a costly, super-fast broadband connection to stream games effectively. But developing bigger, better, and more robust internet infrastructure won't just benefit gamers. That is something that will happen around the world for everybody within the next few decades, meaning that lengthy download times for games will be a thing of the past, unless you specifically want to play offline. This isn't to everyone's taste, as there's no small number of people who love physical video game copies and collecting them as they become increasingly rare in favor of digital sites. There will always be a small market for physical video games, just like there are still markets for paper books, Blu-rays, and vinyl records. But it will surely be edged out of the mainstream by the convenience of the digital streaming future. Not everyone is happy to pay a subscription and have their access to media removed someday, and you can't really blame them. Sometimes it's nice to have something in your hands and know you own it, and that it can't be taken away by a lapsing membership fee. As technology grows, the options that make life easier for people are the ones that will become widely adopted. Until VR does this too, it might not be the metaverse future it promises. And that's what video games in 2050 will look like. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.